Hello and welcome and thanks for stopping by to check out this video. Please subscribe to our channel, like this video and check out the description for discounts on online training courses. Now, we will do in this tutorial, we will see how we can uh, enable entity framework and also installing Stackify to help us uh, trace our application inside the ASP.NET Core and also to view the uh, SQL queries of Entity Framework. Okay, so now, first thing first, we need to install the Stackify middleware. Okay, just look for it Stackify middleware. And you just need to come down here and add this line inside your configure method to configure the uh, trace middleware. Now, if I run this and let me bring the Stackify interface for you. Now, as soon as we do an HTTP request to our application, this uh, prefix stackify prefix will show us data and will show us exactly what is happening like it will show us that there is an API request it took uh, this amount of time what calls has been called inside it and so on each time you do a request let me clear this you will receive a new stackify trace also, it will help you to see the queries of uh, entity frameworks. So now, let's come down here and let's install entity framework packages to our own application. Now, I will come down here, browse and select to install Microsoft Entity Framework Core. I will install this. Now, after we install this and we have Entity Framework installed, I will uh, create a new folder just to make things neat. I'm going to call it Data Access. And here I'll add a new class. I'm going to call this one the uh, App Data Context, which is our own context class. So we can like uh, create uh, the uh, let's say the models and so on inside this C class. Now I'll come down here. This C class need to inherit of D B small letter actually context from entity framework. Okay, and we need to have the context uh, options over here so let's do that let's create the constructor of the app uh, data context and we will need to pass db context options of the type of app data context i'm gonna have the options and I'll pass it to the base constructor. Now, after we add the constructor, we can have the uh, on middle creating method. On model creating Okay, we need to pass the model builder and we will save this. Now this will be used for configuring the ASP. Uh, I'm sorry, the entity framework core uh, with the application. Now after we add this, we need to configure the uh, app, uh, the startup class actually, and add 
uh, SQL Server to it so we can uh, read the data and uh, like work with it so I'm gonna come down here I'm gonna call services I'm gonna say add oops serve oh actually I'm, I am at the wrong method sorry now we will come down here we'll call services dot add db context as you see and this db context shall be taking from the app data context now after this we will need to configure it pass to it some options now these options shall connect to the sql server i'm gonna say use now notice we have more than option we can use in memory we can use uh, different things now we need the option of use sql server but unfortunately it's not available that is because we need to uh, say using entity framework core now here we need to set the configuration dot get connection string which will call the name of the uh, connection string inside our own application and this way we will be like uh, getting the connection string for our database so I'll head over here I'll add this I'm gonna give it the name of uh, app data context okay and here shall be my connection string which I will add later on this needs to change like this okay now uh, after we added it, everything we need we will come down here add a new folder just to keep things neat I'm gonna call it entity now via the entity class I'll add a new class and I will uh, call it let's say that this is the to do item okay now we will add this class now this class shall expose the following property I'm gonna give it the ID property I'm gonna give it a new property I'm gonna give it title I'm gonna give it uh, also uh, a description description and we need to annotate it over here with the key data attenuation so this like a uh, table understand or the entity framework understand that this uh, property is the property that uh, is the primary key of our own application or I'm um, sorry our entity but we also need to head over to the context over here and we need to add a new property of uh, db set of the type we created which is uh, I'm sorry to do item okay we need to add the appropriate referencing and we're gonna call it items now this shall be the name of the table inside our own database now what I will do I'll come down here add the appropriate connection string to my app settings so I can work with the database so now I have added the appropriate connection string to my um, app settings now you have more than a way of working with the database you can either use migrations 
uh, to create the tables or you could create the tables yourself now what i recommend is going with the database first approach because you will have a much higher control over the database than letting the application running its own unique uh, custom scripts which is uh, can be daunting and uh, too much okay now what i will do i'll open a new command line you can uh, select powershell or the console and i'm gonna say add dash migration and this shall be the first or the initial migration migration okay well i guess the app it's not recognizing uh, the command so we will head over to the dot net entity framework migrations and i'm gonna say add initial migration now this will create for us the migration folder and the migration context now if you notice over here we have successfully created the migration if i head over to the migration folder notice that here we have some command that define the SQL that need to be run against the database to create the value and the model snapshot uh, show you like what's item like the snapshot of the model when the migration has been created now to uh, update the database we will call dot net entity framework database update but before i run the command i want to show you my database over here if i expand the tables notice that my tables are empty and i'm not having any table if i run this this will hit my database and update the database and if i come back and refresh the tables notice that now i have this the items table and with the same columns that we have choose and with this table now what this table does the migration history contains the migrations that has been run against this database and the version of entity framework okay now let's close this let's come back here and we have created our own first migration now I want to access the database and try to get some data okay now let's head over to uh, we have the sample data controller I want to just use the sample controller okay I'm gonna inject a new app data context app data context I'm gonna create a new read only context over here I'll add just underscore and I will hit it like this so I can access the data now I'm not really interested in the query itself this is just a dummy query I'll just come down here say var data I'll call my context items dot to list now what I will do I'll just add a new breakpoint I'll head to the table over here and add a new item say first item and this is the description 
we have the first item saved inside the database now we're gonna run this and we're gonna take advantage of uh, stackify over here let's call it 27.0.0.1201.12 is the default address for stackify now as soon as we hit the ABI controller everything went smoothly we have a single item which is the item we have created we hit continue and we hit over to stackify the nice thing about stackify we can see all the queries that has been generated from entity framework how long did it take to generate okay what's the time it took also and so on which is can be really really helpful in debugging our own applications so this was a quick tutorial in how to use entity framework with the asp.net core and react and also installing stackify for application uh, monitoring and tracing please make sure you subscribe to our channel like this video and check out the description for uh, discounts on online training and also go to our website tutorialsxl.com thank you for watching